Maxmatic Squirkator was really a fabulous invention. In the wink of an eye, it could find phone numbers or the price of cabbages or carrots stored in its memory in different databases. It could even solve the most tortuous mathematical equations and calculate with even the biggest numbers. Its memory and its central processing unit could play music for you. It helped Professor Mac 1 draw up the plans for his machines using the computer-aided design program. It controlled the robots that made the machines with its robotics function. And when it wasn't working, it even drew cartoons. In fact, the Squirkator helped us draw and animate the cartoon you've been watching. With help from a group of very talented artists and computer specialists, of course. But despite all its wonderful qualities, we must admit that Maxmatic Squirkator did remain a somewhat cumbersome tool. But let's not forget that it used mainly third-generation squirks. And while they were much smaller than their first and second-generation ancestors, they were still much too big. After another special treatment, these mini-mini squirks were nice enough to lay mini-mini eggs. And out popped the fourth generation, the micro-squirks. Thanks to them, Maxmatic designed the Micro Squirkator, the ancestor of our microcomputers. Later on, thanks to some very clever programming, the Micro Squirkator was even able to speak. Now all the Matics could converse with their own personal mini Squirkator. From this day on, a vast new future opened up for the Matics, for the Squirkator, and for Squirkic science in general. Maybe we'll tell you about it in our next series. For now, we'd like to thank our stars, Mac 1 and Mac 2, the ingenious Maxmatic and his Squirks, and last but not least, our friends the Matics, who we hope to see again right here on your TV.